Goodman, uh, one of the pioneers and experts in the area of pay-per-click advertising. And uh, what I'd like to talk with you about is uh, to explore the pay-per-click ads on uh, the Google uh, content or display network. Uh, first of all, what, what is the content or display network? Let's talk about that. This has been running since, I believe, it's 03 or 04. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was a uh, pilot project that Google rolled out to, you know, in the, it, we consider it a big part of the, the advertising world today. But in the old days, it was really this test of putting these little, little ads, the same text ads as you see in search, uh, on partner websites all around the web. Like my site, for example. For example. used to have them. Uh, and they called the program AdSense. Uh, it still is called AdSense for, mm -hmm. you know, smaller publishers. Uh, and so much has changed with that. So, uh, first of all, the terminology's changed. Uh, for advertisers, we now call it the display network, not the content network. Okay. Um, so, how it works, well, you know, uh, it, it is changing. Uh, publishers can still do the, you know, very simple self-serve stuff of putting these ads on their site. But many formats now, you can have, uh, you know, any kind of display ad, uh, any graphic ad, animation. If you want. So, um, in other words, like my site is, is uh, WilsonWeb.com. I could put Google ads on my site and earn some money. Many, many, many businesses have earned some money, some advertising money. For sure. With these kind of ads. So they don't just show up in the search engine results, but on content sites yep. of uh, yep. smaller, medium, large businesses, for that matter. Absolutely. There's some real big ones, too. But now, uh, you mentioned these are not just text ads anymore. What other kinds of ads show up? Or can just be to begin, uh, just as a starter, uh, all of the IAB, uh, uh, you know, standard display ad formats. So any uh, uh, leaderboard, skyscraper, banner ad size. So Google is getting into the display ad business. They are big time. Uh, okay. And they're trying really hard to make that catch up to their own expectations. We know they acquired DoubleClick, so that explains some of the additional network uh, inventory that's available out there. Well, let me talk about text ads for a minute. If I have text ads on, this, on, for, on search results, those will perform differently than text ads on somebody's site. Why is that? Yeah, and how do they perform differently, yeah, first of all, right. is the click-through rate on the ads uh, on, uh, around the web, the display ads, uh, is much lower. Uh, but you're not penalized for that fact in 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 the platform. Why are they lower? Tr and they're then they're lower, of course, because uh, the intent of the user. Right. They're doing something else. They're reading content as opposed to uh, so on the search engine. They're looking for something. They want to find it and go to it. Yes. But on on a content site, they're reading something and oh, my eye went over here and I might click there. And it's got to be contextually relevant, but. Uh, you know, it, clearly it's interrupting them in some way. So why should I even put uh, text ads on a, on a content dis site, a third-party site, n rather than the search pages? Well, mainly uh, because it is additional inventory. It's a big web. Um, it's much bigger than search. Um, so if you run out of uh, volume, you, you search is great, but it's, it's quite finite, and you run out of keywords to bid on. So if I want to increase volume, place. this is one way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how about pricing? Are they as expensive? Uh, what, what price differential should I expect to see? Well, that's, that's become quite interesting. The price has risen over the years gradually. So as the networks become more optimized, if you will, Google used something called automatic matching. Terminology keeps changing. But if you're using that kind of um, easy to use, uh, one where Google's technology will find relevant sites and pages to put your ads on, um, you know, that didn't work very well at first, but with machine learning and with Google's, they say Google's like a baby's brain, it, it learns faster than you might think, um, it got better. Uh, so as a result, we're willing to pay more. And we're willing to pay, uh, so, but, you know, you might start out bidding half as much as you do mm -hmm. on search and, and, and kind of go from there. Um, are, yeah. there are there any things that uh, would be indicators to me that I shouldn't be advertising on uh, content or display network sites. What are the what are the, the red flags in your mind? There are some uh, th some businesses that are um, harder to uh, harder to uh, I guess get really granular and specific with predicting. Uh, so if something very niche, a business to business, mm -hmm. uh, something expensive that, let's face it, you could probably go around and find the, the six forums 
that discuss this technology online. And so Google's system is really meant for reach and for having their... Something more you know, general. Yeah, absolutely. And they may, they may wind up being quite specific. But if it's, if it's like a business-to-business -business site, the system is assuming a wider reach. And there, of course, are a lot of, I would call them, uh, you know, somewhat unethical publishers who, uh, who might try to target high-bid uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> advertisers. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're selling some software that costs uh, $50,000 mm -hmm. to install something very technical, and maybe some hacker site has got your ad on it. Now, I'm assuming that uh, ads intended for a content or display network need to be in different ad groups so that I can watch the ROI separately from my search campaigns. Yeah, that's right. You can do it uh, by, by actually just enabling it within the same ad group as your okay. search campaign. Um, but oftentimes we recommend separating them completely so you're writing not only uh, writing different ad copy and, and tailoring it better for whatever audience you perceive to be out there, um, but it may make it easier to track separately. If you're working with a client that's brand new to pay-per-click, do you recommend trying the, the content or display network right away, or do you start with search and then move into that, or what's your feel for it these days? Well, we used to be uh, quite wary of it yes. and, and go slow. Today, there are some advertisers that, depending on their objectives, um, they actually go on content first. Um, you know, uh, they may have uh, s unique situations. Maybe they've got a business partner that's, uh, uh, or, or a channel partner that's using all the keywords and they, they're getting in trouble. <laughs> well, our workaround is, well, uh, your you know, executive team has asked for a certain amount of relevant advertising and a certain amount of re re relevant clicks. Um, so we're finding channels in the display network okay. that work out. Well, thanks for sharing with us some of your insights. Uh, tell me about your business and what you do. Page Zero Media, uh, you know, as you could tell from my uh, discussion of all these ins and outs, uh, is an agency that works uh, pretty detailed fashion on paid search and related uh, media. We basically have clients of all shapes and sizes, and uh, all, the only requirement is, of course, that they, they have to be into optimizing uh, and, and uh, growing paid search uh, type campaign. And pay their bill on time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Andrew, for sharing with us. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today.